Thanks for joining me today. I'm Corella Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to paint an apple in three different art styles. I'm using Corel Painter 2018 today, but you could apply these principles to just about any digital painting application. So here on my canvas, I have a couple of sketches of an apple, and then I have a finished painting of an apple. Now this third example is what's considered to be photorealism, where the artwork looks just like a photo or very close to it. I'm also going to paint this apple using a simple shading style, and then in the second example, I'll do it in an impressionist style. And then last but not least, we'll take a look at how I painted this photorealistic example here. So let's go ahead and start with the simple shading. I have my sketch on a layer here, and I have a layer underneath that, which is just a regular layer. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in to this sketch here, and I'm going to reduce the opacity of my sketch so that I can still see it, but it's not too dark. Back on that layer one, I'm just gonna name that layer apple. I'm gonna create another layer above it, call it stem. We'll create another layer, we'll call it highlight and one more layer that we will call lines. So let's go ahead and start with the lines. I'm gonna select the smooth scratch board and I'm gonna hold Control and Alt and drag my brush until I get the diameter of brush that I want. I'm gonna select black, do a test stroke. And I think that that's a bit too thick, so I'm gonna hit my left bracket key a couple times to make my brush a bit smaller. I think that will work. And I'm going to go through here and very carefully ink over my sketch to create my ink lines. And when you're working in the simplified style, what you're doing is you're containing color within ink lines. So I'm trying to draw very smooth, very clean lines. I have a little bit of damping applied, which slows down my brush stroke. You can feel free to make segmented lines if you want. It doesn't have to be all one solid line. It's up to you to decide where you want to put lines. So for example, we could have one right there and you can choose to outline more or less of your subject. But this would be the very, very basic outline here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the apple layer now. I'm gonna go ahead and just open my reference apple here in my reference image palette. And I can use that to choose colors from by clicking the color sampler. I'll just sample one of these middle red colors here. We'll go back to the smooth scratch board, make our brush quite a bit smaller, and then just paint right along the edge here and just make sure to not paint over the edge but you can go right behind it so that your line covers up your color. And just focus on the edges and don't worry too much about the center because we'll take care of that. But you want to try to be as efficient as possible here. That's why we're doing it this way. You want to make sure that if you do overpaint the line, you can switch to your eraser with N on your keyboard. And just erase anything where you overpainted. You want to make sure that this is a closed shape as well. So if I hide my lines, you can see that there aren't any gaps like this where paint could creep out. We're doing that because now we're going to switch to the paint bucket and we're going to fill the center there. Now, If you notice you missed any spots, you can switch back to your brush and just fill those in. Now that we've done that, we can go to the stem layer. We can sample a stem color and we can paint that in. Now, if you find it's hard to see one color on top of another, what you can do is you can just choose a nice bright color that you can see rather than the color that you're gonna to wanna to use later. So this one, we won't worry about painting along the edge. It's just as easy just to go ahead and fill it in like this. Then we'll turn on preserve transparency. We'll sample a brown color and then we will go to edit fill. And that easily changes the color from that blue that we could more easily see to the brown, which is the final color that we want for our stem. Now, if we turn off preserve transparency, we can go back to our scratch board brush and we can just clean up any little bits that we missed there. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's go to our highlight layer. We'll sample our highlight color, which is an almost white. And we'll just draw that in as a nice smooth circle. And we could even put in a couple of little spots around the edge there just to give it a little bit of texture. And those are our very, very basic layers. And that's about as basic as you can get for shading but we'll add just a little bit more detail to this. Let's go to our apple layer. Let's go ahead and sample this dark red color here. And we'll put in some of that just in this area here. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of simplifying the different areas. I'm looking for shadow areas and highlight areas, areas of reflections, areas that stand out against other areas. And I'm just drawing those in, but I'm not putting a lot of definition into those areas. 
If you look in the photorealistic example, there's lots of different colors going on near this highlight. There's lots of different colors going on near this shadow. But in the simplified version, I'm just simplifying those observations. So we have just a dark area. It doesn't need to be more than just a couple colors here. Now we can continue using this shadow color here. Let's go ahead and turn on preserve transparency for that apple layer. And overall on the apple, there's a bit of a shadow, mostly on one side and the bottom. So we'll just go ahead and draw that in and just fill it in with a nice big brush like that. But just make sure that the edge is nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and sample our apple color. We'll make it a bit brighter, a bit more red. And we'll just draw in some of that with a big brush. Staying focused mostly in the center there. And let's just make our color lighter. And close to that highlight, we can draw a little bit of light spot there. And go even lighter and put some of that surrounding the highlight. Now for this particular style of simple shading, essentially all we really need to do is just determine where our light source is and have our color start out lighter there and get darker as we move away from that light source. And to accomplish that, we just keep creating more intermediate colors or more colors that are in between the two colors that are next to each other. So you could sample those colors by eye or another way that you could do it is you could select your color sampler tool or your dropper tool. Most applications will let you change your point sample size you could change it to a larger average, let's say 31 by 31 pixels. And we'll go ahead and sample right on the border of, let's say, these two colors. And then what we'll get is a mix of those two colors. If we switch back to the scratch board and we draw, then we're getting a color that's right in between. So all we need to do is take a smaller brush and just trace right along that line. Do that with the next color here. I'm holding Alt to sample. And we'll just trace right over that line. Go between these two colors here. We we'll want to make sure preserve transparency is turned on. Now there was a little bit of shadow depression here where it goes down into the stem, so I'll just try to keep that. And along the outer edge of the apple, put a little reflected color. And we'll just keep going with the in-between colors. Now it's up to you how many levels of shading you want to add. You could certainly leave it at something very simple, like just maybe two or three different levels, or you can add many, many, many levels. Now if we wanted to make our shadow darker, we can just sample this color and simply make it a bit darker. And then again, just concentrate that paint right in the center. So now we can go ahead and switch to our stem layer. And let's go ahead and just sample this base color. We'll make it a bit darker. And we'll have a shadow on the far side of the stem. And then we want to sample that base color again, make it brighter. And going right down the center, that's where we have our highlight. Now we can go ahead and hide our sketch layer. And we have some very, very basic shading for our apple. Now if we zoom out quite a bit and we compare them side by side, you can see that it has kind of a realistic shading effect. Shadow might be a bit too strong on that. So what we can do is we can go back to the Apple layer, do effects, tonal control, adjust colors, and we could increase the value if we want it to be brighter. If it's too dull, we can increase the saturation and we can make it more vibrant. If the hue is not correct, we can shift the hue and we can make it a more pink red or a more yellow red. If we want a green apple, we could do that. We'll go ahead and use these settings here and click on OK. Now if we zoom out, you can see that looks much better. Now obviously if we compare this to our more realistic example here, we're leaving out a lot of detail. We're leaving out texture, we're leaving out spots on the apples, we're leaving out these other colors, we're leaving out the reflections, and that's because we want to simplify things in this style. You only really need the essentials for this particular style. And this might even be overdone. There might be too many levels of shading, and I might have been fine with just two or three, like I mentioned earlier. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can build upon this now by doing a little bit of blending. Most digital painting applications should have some sort of blender or smudge tool. Corel Painter has quite a few. I'm going to select a diffuse blur. I'm going to use a medium sized brush. And I'm just going to very carefully blend these edges just to kind of mix the colors together. 
As soon as I start doing that, it starts to look a lot more realistic. You want to try to stay away from the edges because you might accidentally pull in some background color. You could even go to our highlight layer, turn off preserve transparency, blend that a little bit. And what that gives us is still a very basic shading style, but with a different look to it. The shading is much softer. So those are essentially the basic steps to get to the beginnings of painting photorealistically. You're blocking in the colors of the apple, you're creating form by establishing a light source and then having the colors get lighter or darker as they move away from the light source. And then you're blending those colors together to create transitions. And then of course there's more steps like adding texture and reflections and things like that. So that's the basic shading style. Now let's move on to something that's kind of in between the two, but a little more stylized and a little more loose, and that is the impressionist style. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close up my group here. I'll go ahead and just save my progress by going to save as. Let's go ahead and open up our impressionism group. I'll reduce the opacity of that sketch. I'm gonna to go to this layer one. I'll call that apple. And we could do just like we did in the previous example and use the scratch board to draw along the edge and fill that in. But I'll just show you another technique just so you have some options. We can use the lasso selection tool and then just go through here and freeform draw this like so. If you overpaint it, then you just hold down Alt and you trim off anything that you don't want here, like so. If you need to add some stuff in, you can hold Shift and you could add to it. Let's just go ahead and go with something like this. We'll select the paint bucket. Again, we'll sample one of these basic apple colors here and we'll fill. Control D to deselect. And you can see that was another quick and easy way just to fill in an area there. So let's create a new layer for stem. We'll use that same lasso selection tool. And if we need to trim some off, we hold down Alt. Go ahead and sample brown color, fill, and now we have our stem. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the visibility of the stem and the apple. And essentially we'll be using these as stencils to keep our paint within a certain area. So let's create a new thick paint layer. I'm gonna look in my brush looks and mixer palette. And I'm gonna select the knife canvas look. I'm gonna right click on that apple layer that we created, choose select layer content, click back on the thick paint layer, hide the selection with control shift H. I'll sample this dark shadow color. And now we can go ahead and paint and our paint will stay within that selection. So essentially what we wanna do is just fill this in. We wanna to try to follow the contour of the apple. So think about the direction that it's curving. And we can be pretty loose about this. Let's go ahead and name this layer Apple. Let's create a new thick paint layer. Follow that same process where we right click on the stem, select layer content. We can just name that thick paint layer stem. On that stem layer, look at that brown color and we'll just fill it in with that. Control D to deselect. It's kind of hard to see our sketch, so let's increase the opacity of it. Let's turn on preserve transparency. We'll select white. We have to unlock the sketch layer and we'll go ahead and fill. Now you'll be able to see that sketch on top of that darker color. Let's go ahead and go back to that apple layer. Let's create a new thick paint layer above it. We can call this mid. This will be for the mid-tones. Let's sample a mid-tone. Let's just think about where that shadow color is and we'll reserve some area for that. We'll paint in everything else here. We wanna make sure our paint stays within this apple area. So let's just get that selection from our apple again by choosing select layer content. And then we can just go and fill this in just like so. Now you don't have to use these selections, but I find that it makes it nice and easy. If you use light pressure, you can kind of scrape away your paint if it's too thick. If you want to build it up thicker, you can use firm pressure. Go ahead and go along the top edge here with some of that. Let's go ahead and create a new thick paint layer. I'll call this highlight. And of course, we'll want to sample that highlight color Put in a bit of that. The reason why I'm creating these new thick paint layers is because then you get this effect like the paint is dry underneath. Otherwise it starts to kind of blend together and that's not quite the effect that I want. And then just like before, we just need to sample in between these two colors. Make sure that when we're sampling that we're getting an average of the point sample. And you can see that we get that nice mix of the two colors. I'm using the Wacom Art Pen for this brush, so that allows me to rotate my cursor, which makes it easier to get different kinds of shapes and things like that. Sample between those two colors again. New thick paint layer. 
Now it's up to you if you want to name these layers. I'm not going to fuss over that too much. I'm just going to keep creating layers as I need them. Go ahead and sample another lighter color, put in some of that. And you can be pretty loose here with this because you're just trying to get the impression of an apple. It doesn't need to look just like an apple. The colors need to be right. The form needs to be basically right. The shape needs to be basically right. But you can use a little bit of artistic license when you're doing it. New thick paint layer, make my color brighter. Maybe just sample kind of a red color like that. Just introduce some other colors into it so it has a little more life and vibrance to it. You can even try some of those little yellow colors here and there. Maybe some oranges. So it's not all one dull color. We could put in a little bit of the environment color. So that would be reflecting off the apple if it's nice and shiny. And just keep adding thick paint layers just to build up that nice texture. Bring back in some of that shadow if I removed too much of it. And again, I'm just following the contour of this apple here. That's really important because when you do that, it makes it look nice and realistic. Let's go ahead and hide that sketch because we don't really need that anymore. Let's go to our stem layer now. We'll get a selection from that stem layer. Go to the stem thick paint layer. Hide the selection with Control Shift H. And if we want, we can put in some different colors here to add a little bit of shading to it. If we want more of a dry paint look, we just create a new thick paint layer. Get a nice dark color from our stem here. Put in some of that. It gives us a nice dry paint look. We go even darker that way down at the bottom. It's really going down into that apple. New thick paint layer. A nice bright highlight down the center. If we wanted to add a little bit of green to that stem, we could do that. Might help it look a little more realistic. Maybe a bit of yellow in there. Now as you create these layers, you're going to end up with a lot of layers. And if you're pretty happy with how it's looking so far, you can go ahead and start to merge some layers down. I'm going to keep my stem separate from the apple. So I'll merge just the stem layers. Keep my highlights separate as well. So I'm going to merge just the apple layers. We can right click on the apple. Select layer content. Hide the selection with Control Shift H. New thick paint layer. And we'll just continue adding colors in here. Go ahead and try to re-emphasize this little hole in the apple here where the stem goes in. Should be a little bit of highlight on these edges as well to help those stand out. If you want to make the colors pop a bit more, make them more bright, you could do that too. That gives it kind of a certain feel to it. I put in a bit more yellow and some other little colors here and there. Go ahead and merge those apple layers down. And just like last time, if I want to go to Effects, Tonal Control, Adjust Colors, I can tweak the colors if I want to make them brighter, make the apple lighter overall. I could have chosen lighter colors too. The thick paint has a habit of making your colors a little bit darker because it's trying to add shading and highlights to your paint to make it look thicker. So something like that looks pretty good. And you could also try some of these other looks if you want a little bit of texture. We could try Knife Break. And you could paint in a little bit of texture like this. If you want some little spots, you could try Knife Rocky. You can make your paper scale much smaller. Use very light pressure. That'll put in little spots like that. One thing that might be nice to do as well is to go back to that Knife Canvas look and sample one of these darker red colors. We want to deselect our active selection so that we can paint right along the edge. That way the edge isn't so absolutely perfect. Creates a bit of a outline as well. And it's okay if the edges are a little bit smudgy, a little bit imperfect, because again, that just helps it look more realistic, like it's a looser impressionist style. And something like that looks pretty good. You could do that on the stem as well if you wanted to. I'm just rotating my brush using the Wacom Art Pen so I can get those nice sharp edges. Let's outline that a bit. And there we go. We have a nice impressionist looking apple. Now, if we zoom out on these examples, you can see that they all look about the same. If we zoom back in, then you can see they start to look different because they have different styles. The principles I use to create these apples are all basically the same. 
what's different are the techniques and the brushes that I use to get the completed result. So now for this third and final example here, this is photorealism and it takes quite a bit more time than I spent on the first two examples to get to something like this. Now fortunately I have a video that will walk you through all of those steps that I'll link to in the description of this video, but I won't be going through those steps in this particular video. So if you're interested in learning how to paint photorealistically, check that out. But this will give you an idea of how you can paint in a few different styles. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, take a quick second to click the like button. And if you'd like to join me on my mission to create more free digital art tutorials like this, check out patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.